This week we're talking about the 20 things you probably don't know about Walt Disney World. This is episode 90. I'm Soraya. I'm Aurora. And together we're just, just your, your average, average Disney, Disney travelers. travelers. So, not all of our listeners, well, actually, I don't even know how many listeners we have. I think we have three. Yeah. At most. <laughs> We've gone down, because I used to say five. <laughs> so, okay, most of the time, we're talking about Disneyland. Yes. And we go to Disneyland more, because it's easier. Um, but this time, we're going to talk about Disney World. And to be fair, we're going to get to Disneyland. We'll do that next week. But Disney World gets to go first this time. Disney does get to, uh, Disney World does get to go first and there are a lot, I mean, Disney World is huge, and there's a lot that goes on that we don't know about, or things, there's a lot of little obscure facts and things. Yeah. Uh, things that most people aren't aware of. Things that maybe we weren't aware of until we did some research. So, you want to start us off with number one? Sure. So, it cost $400 million, yeah, to build Walt Disney World originally. Um, they've now spent over $3.5 billion on it, and that was taken, what, four years yeah, ago? Yeah, I couldn't find anything that was current, like recent, but the estimate back in 2017, mid-2000, I think it was like May 2017, was $3.5 billion, which of course, we've had a lot happen since then. Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Um, they've had, what else, I'm, my mind's gone blank, Tron. Tron, yeah. Um, you know, Cosmic Rewind, like all these different things have happened, and so I am sure that number is higher. Oh, yeah. So in response, oh, this is number two. Second thing, in response to concerns about impacts on the environment, the Disney company bought 12,000 acres of wetland 15 miles south of Disney World and turned it into a preserve. I didn't know that. I did not know that either. I mean, I knew that they had a large space for Disney World, and a lot of that, most of it, is undeveloped. Most of it, if you're, like, when you're driving through or on the monorail looking or anything like that, it's just green and undeveloped space, and so I would have considered... Lots of alligators. Yeah, a lot, actually, yes. And so um, I didn't know that they also had purchased and um, kind of, I don't know if it donated then or what, but it's designated as a spot where no more building and... Yeah. Yeah, cool. Number three. Um, number three. There are over thirty. Sorry, there are over thirty thousand hotel rooms on Disney property. It would take you more than eighty years to stay in each room for one night. Man, could you imagine if that was your goal? <laughs> <laughs> I think most people are just happy to try to stay in each hotel once, and I think most people, you know. As normal people, that's not going to happen probably. Yeah. But there's uh, a lot of people who have. Um, I just don't know very many of them. But to stay in each room, crazy. I wouldn't yeah. want to stay in each room though. Not every room Maybe is each e kind of room. There you go. Each category of room, or like yeah. which each type of view or whatever. That's a better. That's that kind of lowers it by a bit. <laughs> makes it almost achievable for some people. Still, probably not us though. <laughs> yeah, definitely not us. <laughs> okay, number four. Liberty Square in Magic Kingdom has no public restrooms. This is to reflect the colonial times, the era in which this land is presenting, and they had no indoor plumbing then, so there would be no bathrooms. But due to codes, you have to have restrooms available for restaurant guests, so the two restaurants in Liberty Square do each have a restroom. So there are bathrooms in Liberty Square, there's just not what you would consider public restrooms. They're actually in establishments. Yeah. And here's a bonus fact. It doesn't count towards one of our 20. But, and we've talked about this before, the brown path that flows down the center of the walkway in Liberty Square is to re represent the chamber pot waste that would have been thrown out of the houses and into the streets. Yep. Since they didn't have plumbing, that's what they did. Yeah. I am so glad I don't live in that time. No wonder Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, number five. Yeah, number five. The Seas in Epcot is the uh, second largest aquarium in the U.S., uh, Georgia Aquarium being the largest. Yeah, someday I want to go there. Yeah. 
It looks incredible. I sometimes watch document. Well, it's, they haven't had any new seasons yet for a while, but they had a documentary that was where they followed the the aquarium, the workers and the animals. And oh, I loved that show. I miss it. But yes, Disney World has a huge aquarium, and so what's cool is it's included in your Epcot day. You know, yeah. so if you have a ticket and you go to Epcot, Epcot. You get to go to the second largest aquarium in the country. All right, number six. Walking into Magic Kingdom is like walking into a movie. Um, and this is one that actually works for Disneyland as well. Yeah. The posters you see in the tunnels as you walk under the railroad tracks are coming soon attractions. And the Main Street windows are the credits. The employees are all cast members and stories are told everywhere. And another bonus fact. Each name on those windows on Main Street is someone who is important to uh, an important part of Disney history. We've talked about that a little bit before, too. Yeah. And again, that is good for Disneyland as well. Mm-hmm. Number seven. A Liberty Tree in Liberty Square has 13 lanterns hanging from its bran- uh, branches. These 13 lanterns represent the original 13 colonies of the United States. Oh. Yeah, so... And it's really pretty at night. Mm-hmm. It looks really nice. I think at Halloween time, I want to say they hang... Would it be jack-o'-lanterns or ghosts? Or, I can't remember. I think they decorate the tree for the holidays and stuff, and so it's fun, but yep. All right, number eight. The Moroccan Pavilion in Epcot determined the color of Tower of Terror in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Um, we've talked about this again before, too, so yeah. some of these are not so unknown. Uh, the Tower of Terror shows up. You can see it in the background when you're looking at Morocco or in Morocco looking out. So they had to make sure um, attention wouldn't be drawn to it, and they used the same colors of Moroc- the Morocco Pavilion to paint the Tower of Terror. Um, so it just blend in. And to be honest, it does. I don't really ever think of it. I don't notice it, you yeah. know, unless I actually am thinking about it, and then I look, at, and you can tell. Yeah. Um, number nine. Every day, more than 200 lost sunglasses are turned into lost and found at Magic Kingdom. Just Magic Kingdom, 200. Every day. Yep. <laughs> Your father has contributed at least once or twice to that. <laughs> <laughs> I always That's why I always tell people, bring two or three pairs of sunglasses. And it's because dad, he either breaks them or loses them. All right. Yep. Okay. So what are we on? Number 10? Yes. Halfway through. That's not bad. We're going to get through this episode fast. In Liberty Square, back to Liberty Square, the buildings all have numbers, like a house number at the door. If you put a 1-8, so 18, in front of that number, you'll get the year of the design of that building. Um, so 1887 or 18, you know, whatever the number is. And then as you, so that makes it so as you're walking through Liberty Square, you're actually like literally walking through time. Yeah. Which I think is cool. I didn't actually know that. I've never yeah. paid attention. And I'm pretty sure that the buildings are actually taller than historically accurate but they use forced perspective to make them seem a bit shorter oh i'm sure for some of them yeah because like the houses back then used to be a lot shorter yeah and they're about i think roughly like kind of like normal size ish houses at disney world yeah it's it's cool to the next time you're in liberty square if um just take a look around because it is everything is so deliberate um so intentional and there's it's just every detail is part of that story that it ta- we talked about, like you're walking into this movie. Yeah. It's all part of that story, and the, it's all part of this land for that purpose. And so it's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Number 11. Yeah, number 11. The uh, spaceship Earth is in Epcot is um, 180 feet tall and weighs 16 million pounds. Just crazy. That is one yeah. heavy golf ball mm-hmm. and <laughs> they have this weird like um like gutter system like yeah. in the thing so then if it's raining it doesn't just pour on the yeah. people underneath i know you love that fact i think it's really cool it's, it's kind I of think ingenious it's funny. yeah well it's, it's really it's, <laughs> it's funny to think about if they didn't have it oh you'd like the idea of what the rain would do to people walking <laughs> until it's you <laughs> well to be fair you still have coverage because like the sides because the water will keep going down. Yeah, probably. That's true, usually. But there are kind of like panels. Yeah, like they're know. panels because of the gutter system. Yeah. 
I don't know, but yeah, that's an it is a it is a cool fact. Um, and you know that being that heavy, it is huge. It's huge, and there's a ride, inside. and there's a ride inside. Yeah, and so it does make sense that it's so big. The giant but, ah, that's so 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 big and so heavy. All right, so number twelve. The tree of life in Animal Kingdom is 14 stories tall and has over 300 animals carved in the trunk and branches. And man, if you go to Animal Kingdom, take time. Take time to walk around. There's paths that wind around the tree. And, and there's like roots. Yeah, like the roots and, and the trunk and the branches that all have carvings in them. Um, it's just really cool. And the more you stand and look at it, the more details you'll see the more animals you'll see and uh it's just incredible i love it it's it's really pretty so um, 13. 13 uh star tours in disney <laughs> <laughs> star tours in disney's hollywood studios has 700 possible ride experiences if you were to experience every possible scenario it would take over 58 hours non-stop that's crazy. So when we were first starting to talk about this and I was sharing some of the stuff I found, I had told you some smaller number, yeah. but they keep adding to it. And so mm -hmm. this is based on what it says, you know, yeah. how much Disney says are available now. And that's crazy. Yeah. And it's like some of them are really small changes, but even then that still ch changes like the possible ride experiences. So now you've ridden this attraction yeah, a I'm ton of ride times. With Disneyland. Disneyland definitely went through a period where it was the same thing because the new movie came out. They kept pushing the, the new scenes. Yeah. Like, I kept going on it. It was the, the exact same like thing. Like, I don't know. I don't remember if the beginning was the same, but the ending was definitely the same. Yeah. But they're back at doing... Mixing well, it up. Mixing it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that it would be interesting to see how often, like, how random is it? And do they, um, you know, kind of skew it and push it towards certain yeah. I movies? Or... Gonna, um add in stuff from, like, Mandalorian, yeah. um, Obi-Wan. Well, I don't know, because do all of the episodes... See, now, I don't ride this because I get sick on simulators. I've only ridden it once or twice, and it's been a long time. Um do all of them have Darth Vader? No, not all of them. Okay, so it wouldn't have to. You could easily have different yeah. times. There's definitely different times because like, there's some where Darth Vader is the one that's confronting you, and then there's one where I think uh, I think Poe talks to you because like, it was even if he doesn't talk to you, it's when um, Palpatine is doing the lightning thing. Uh, yeah. So it has that scene. I'm pretty sure Poe talks to you in that one. But, it, like, it kind of jumps around time period, so it doesn't really... Even within one ride, or just from uh, ride to ride? I think from ride to ride. That would make more sense. Although, that would probably limit how many, um, like, how many possible outcomes you could, or, or experiences you could have. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think so. I don't remember having one that conflicted. So, they do tend to stay, I think. I, in fact, I think I remember reading somewhere that they would. But, I, yeah. but they still said that there were 700 different... Well, yeah, because there's a ton of different ones because there's also the different um, intercom ones because you've got Yoda, you've got Leia, you, I think the captain guy, <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> so that alone has two, maybe three different possibilities. Yeah. And so that just adds more. Yeah. And like you said, some of the differences might be subtle, but yeah. still... If you like that ride, it's still kind of fun to go and see what you get. But I just thought that was crazy how many possibilities. Talk about a repeatable ride because they talk about, like, um, one of the big things is, you know, when you ride and it, there's a new attraction or something, there's a lot of times where it's like, okay, I've done it. I don't need to do it again. And most rides are like that. But when you have rides, not that you wouldn't want to do it again, but you don't need to do it again because you've ridden it before. You've seen it now. Yeah. But when they have different possible outcomes, like, say... Guardians of the Galaxy, um, the Mission Breakout at Disneyland, mm -hmm. where there's six different, you know, po possible songs and scenarios and, and drops. It um, makes it kind of more exciting. You don't know which one you're going to get. And if there's one you still haven't gotten yet, you're going to keep riding until you get that one at least, you know. And I mean, obviously, probably keep riding because you like the ride that much. But 
um, this just makes it so you can't really ever say, oh, I've done this right. I don't have to do it again. You yeah. never know which version you're going to get. It's kind of like Smuggler's Run, too. Where oh, yeah, Smuggler's Run. It's different run, every time. Yeah, it's definitely different every time. Especially since you don't know who you're going to be with and who's controlling what and how good they are at controlling yeah. what. And so, yeah. Um, okay, so that, what number was that? That was, that was 13. 13. Okay, so we're on 14. It is said that, and this, I found this so interesting, it is said that there is a presidential seal in the carpet at Hall of Presidents and that it is the only place other than what the White House where you can see it and it took an act of Congress to get permission to have it placed there. I've heard that so many times. Other podcasts say it, blogs say it, it's all over. But it's not true. There is a seal in the carpet at Hall of Presidents. But if you look at the picture, it even says it. It's the Great Seal of the United States, not the Presidential Seal. Um, the Great Seal of the United States is remarkably similar to the Presidential Seal, but it's not the same. The Presidential Seal's design is patterned after the Great Seal. That's why they look so much alike. But they're not the same thing. There's also not... There's no record of there needing to be an act of Congress for Disney to have that seal, the Great Seal, um, in that carpet. And according to Library of Congress, they're not even sure there would need to be any permission given. So, so when you hear that it's the only place that you can see the presidential seal other than the White House, it's not the presidential seal. It yeah. is a great. It's really cool. It's really it's it's an important seal for the Amer for United States. But it's not the presidential seal. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I thought that was interesting because I didn't know that. I believed for a long time until I did this research that it was the presidential seal. Mm -hmm. um, number 15. In the first scene of the Carousel of Progress, there is a Robin. It's the same Robin they used in Mary Poppins. Cool. Like when, um, what is it? A Spoonful of Sugar, I yeah. think, is the song when she's singing with the Robin. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's cool. I like it when they do that. I like this next one. The next, okay, this is number 16. Tower of Terror plays recordings of people screaming. Yep. So just like like on Main Street, they pipe in the smells of the bakery. In Hollywood Studios, they pipe in the sounds of people screaming. Yeah. So if you think you're hearing them when, they, like, they do the big drop and go, hee, um, You might still be hearing it, I'm sure. Because, yeah. but not all, they don't I mean, always get everybody. pretty far up. Yeah. It's and hard to say how much of your hearing yeah. is the actual screams and how like, much is piping. It might be possible here, but if you can't hear it, it's probably very quiet. And so what you're hearing mostly is definitely the uh, recording. What I want to know is do they do the same thing at Disneyland? Well, maybe. Because you hear the people at Disneyland. Yeah. So is it really the people well, or is it recording? You closer to the building, I'm pretty sure, at Disneyland. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, doesn't Disney World have a, a lot bigger front? Well, yeah, but I... I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, and eventually you have to be close to it if you're going on it. Well, yeah. Or if you're back down that... If you're like... Excuse me. Well, that's you, a good point, because I never hear it when I'm inside, at least at Disneyland. I never hear screams inside. Yeah, I don't know. So, so, that, so, it, so I don't know if they, they do this at Disneyland as well or not, but it'd be interesting to find out. And I'm sure, like, like I said, when you're close, I'm sure you can hear some authentic screaming, but it's funny that they pipe in extra sounds to make it more intense and yeah yeah get everyone worked up mm -hmm. okay. yeah you're next um, number yeah. 17 number, yeah um back to liberty square there's a lot of information at liberty square yeah so in, in liberty square um knows the shutters on the building they're skewed and crooked this Crick, again crooked crooked <laughs> They're crooks. <laughs> They'll steal That's your wallet. <laughs> yeah. A screwed and crooked. This is again to reflect the era. During the revolution yeah, Revolutionary War, metal was not available because they needed to make ammunition. So they used leather strips to tie the shutters to the houses. Over time the letter the leather would stretch and the shutters would uh, shift. Yeah, so to be True to that, they deliberately made all the crooked the the shutters crooked to reflect that. That's pretty cool, and yeah. and and I also wonder. I'm like, well, after the war, why didn't they just switch out the <laughs> hinges with leather the, from the leather back to metal? But well, they probably shifted during. Yeah, the war. they probably they may have. I don't know how long it takes to 
um, how long it has to be weathered and to get to that point. But anyways, yeah. Okay, number 18. Dino Sue in Animal Kingdom. If you don't know who Dino Sue is, she's a dino. <laughs> wow, <laughs> really? Man, <laughs> yeah. I would have never guessed. Um, she's an, an exact replica of the largest tyrann tyr Tyrannosaurus. No, I'm the one having problem with words. Tyrannosaurus Rex ever discovered, and she's four feet or four <laughs> stories <laughs> four tall. Feet. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! man. Imagine being the tallest like T-Rex ever <laughs> found four was four feet tall. That's not very intimidating. <laughs> so yes, four stories tall. It's like an angry toddler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a hobbit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. A total, an exact replica. I believe the actual, I want to say the actual one is, um, oh, is it New York in the museum? Isn't it? Oh, no. I don't remember. Anyways, uh, but this is a replica and yeah, really cool. I like that um, in the holidays they put a Santa hat on her. <laughs> <laughs> um, number 19. Um, it's not a secret, most people know that Animal Kingdom is the largest park at Walt Disney World. Yep, by um, far. Yeah, but did you know that was actually the largest theme park in the world? Yeah, so not just in Disney World, but the entire world. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty impressive. I didn't know that. And, and, and I wonder, like, what is counted as a theme park? I've never been to the San Diego Zoo or the, the San Diego Safari Park. But I know it's got lots of, like, safari, it's like savannas and things. Yeah. And so I wonder, is that considered a theme park or is it considered a zoo and so it wouldn't fall in the same category? I have no idea how large yeah. their, those parks are. But, yeah, technically Animal Kingdom is the largest theme park in the world. And it is huge. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it could very well be bigger than the San Diego parks. I don't know. Or any other large parks that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> okay, last one. This is number 20 on our 20 things that you probably don't know about Walt Disney World. There are more than a thousand hidden Mickeys in Disney World. I don't think there's That's any, yeah, I don't think there's an official number. I don't think anyone knows for sure. It's not like they, you know, put a tally every time they insert a hidden Mickey somewhere. They don't say, oh, add one to the list, you know. And so I don't think anyone ever really knows for sure, but there have been people that have gone through, like, and there's books that have them. And so I believe that at least a thousand, in fact, I've seen 1,100 and I've seen 1,200 named, but I'm not positive. So I'm just going to say at least a thousand, more than a thousand um, hidden Mickeys throughout Walt Disney World. It would take a long time to try to find them all. Oh, yeah. I know sometimes you say, oh, we're going to go and look for all the hidden Mickeys. Well, we're going to go look for some of the hidden Mickeys because <laughs> we're not going to see all of them. But that's always a fun thing to do, um, looking for hidden Mickeys, whether you're on attractions or just walking around the parks or things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've found anywhere near that, anything like that. Oh, no. We don't usually take too much time to dedicate just to that anyways. Not really. But... Anyways, all right. Well, that was fun. So those were 20 things that you probably didn't know about Walt Disney World. Some of those you probably did because we've talked about some of them before, but I don't. I bet you didn't know all of them because we didn't know all of them. Next week, we will talk about the 20 things you probably don't know about Disneyland. This was a little bit trickier in some ways because it's a smaller place for one, but we are so much more familiar with Disneyland. So coming up with new things that surprise even us is a little challenging, but we did it. There's things that surprise us. So. Yep. All righty. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. See you.